using and writing the equations of circles. We're going to start with using it. Uh, on your green paper, you will see the standard form equation for writing uh, the equation of a circle. Uh, now, I think on the paper, I have r squared listed last, but up here, I have r squared first. It really does not matter which one comes first, uh, you know, which side your equation's on. But here are the key pieces. Your center is hk. So h is the number that's paired with the x. Hi. <laughs> hey, Mr. how are you? I'm wondering how are you? Oh, I'm All right, H is the number paired with X. K is the number that's going to be paired with the Y. Notice the subtraction zones, okay? Now, on your paper, if you look at the equations on your paper, not all those are X minus a number or Y minus a number. What that negative is saying is you're going to change the sign, okay? That's going to change the sign. So if it's x plus 2, then the x-coordinate of your center is going to be at negative 2, okay? If it's x plus 2, the coordinate of your center is going to be negative 2. If it's y minus 3, then the coordinate of the y or the y-coordinate of your center is going to be positive 3. Okay, so that minus sign right there means change the sign when you identify your center. The other thing is this equation is equal to r squared. It's equal to r squared. So when you're identifying the actual radius, you're going to have to take the square root of that number right there. Okay, you're going to have to take the square root of that number right there to identify the radius. So if it's equal to 9, then the radius is only going to be 3. If it's equal to 25, your radius is only 5, okay? Uh, none of these are going to have out the wazoo radiuses, uh, especially if, if you're a radii, excuse me, if you're graphing them, okay? They're going to fit on the graph. They're going to fit on the graph. If they don't fit, then you need to go back and check something, okay? Now, the first couple here, if you look at example number one on the paper, x squared plus y squared equals 36. There's nothing being added and subtracted from the x and the y. Well, that means that you are centered at the origin. The center here is 0, 0, okay? Because x minus 0 is the same as just x. So when there's nothing being added or subtracted from your x and y, that means your center is 0, 0. Now, there are some examples there where you may have something added or subtracted from the x, but then the y is just squared then that means that your y coordinate is zero. If there's nothing with the variable, then that coordinate of your center is going to be zero. The radius here, since it's equal to 36, the radius is six. So here's how we're going to graph it. Okay. I think we've done this before, maybe. Is it familiar at all? Maybe. Okay. Center zero, zero. Uh, now, technically, a lot of times you won't actually see that point plotted, but I want you to plot it because that's our starting point. So plot your center. I think the easiest way to graph a circle is from your center, you go directly left, your radius length, so in our case it would be 6. So we're going to go directly left of our center, put a point right there, a negative 6. <laughs> we're going to go directly right from our center, six units. We're going to go directly up from our center, six units, and directly down from our center, six units. That's going to get your extreme ends and edges of your circle, and then it's just a matter of connecting this in a somewhat circular fashion, okay? Connect the, you know, put some, put some curve on these. Don't connect them in a straight line. It's not a square, all right? It is a circle. So just put some curve on your lines here and make it look like a circle. Mine very rarely actually looks like a circle, but give it your best shot, <clears throat> okay? Um, so that is graphing that circle. Okay, center at the origin, radius of six. Brought out six units in all directions. That's technically the definition of a circle, guys. The definition of a circle 
is it's the set of all points that are equidistant from a center point. So any point here on this circle is the same distance from the center. <clears throat> These are just the easiest ones, the, the uh, above, below, left, and right, are the easiest ones to determine if they're six units away. But I mean, even this point over here would be six units away. If we found the distance between, and on my graph, I don't know if this is accurate, but on my graph it's four, four. Um, if we found the distance between four, four, and the origin, if I graphed it correctly, that distance would be six. That distance would be six. So that's really what a circle means. Okay, uh, let's go do one that's not centered at the origin. Let's go to number eight. X minus one squared plus Y plus three squared is equal to four. X minus one squared plus Y plus three squared is equal to four. Okay, so let's identify our center. That should always be our first step. Okay, we change the sign. So it's x minus 1, so our x coordinate is positive 1. It's y plus 3, so our y coordinate is negative 3. That is our center. Go ahead and plot it. x is 1, y is negative 3. So we're down here in the fourth quadrant. x is 1, y is negative 3. Plot that point right there. It's equal to 4, so that means our radius is 2. So from that point, this is going to be a smaller circle, we go up 2, we go down 2, we go right 2, we go left 2. I know I did that in a completely different order than I did the last time. It doesn't matter, just so you get them all. And then throw some curve in there. Make it look like a circle as best you can. I'm not super picky, just so it does not look like you drew a straight line from point to point. Okay? Just do the best job you can, and it'll be good. Okay? So, let's just practice with that right now, given the equation and ask to graph it. They may give us a different set of information, but the key still remains the same. You gotta know where the center is, you gotta know what the radius, <coughs> radius is. So number nine is really simple, okay? The center is eight, eight, the radius is seven. All we have to do is plug that into our standard form equation. So you've got it beside you. I'm gonna write it up here just so I have something to reference. X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared is equal to R squared. So the center, H is eight, K is also eight. That doesn't always happen as we just saw in the previous examples, but in this one it does. The radius is 7. So when we plug this into our equation, it's going to be x minus h squared plus y minus 8 squared is equal to 7 squared, which is 49. And that's it for number 9. Now, number 13, we got to do a little bit more work. We're given the center. That's good, okay, we know H and K, but we're not given the radius. We're told, here's a point on the circle. <clears throat> so let's visualize this here for just a second. We've got the center at uh, 13, 12. So this is the center, and then the point on the circle is 7, 12. So this is a point on the circle. So from the center to a point on the circle, wouldn't that be the radius length? From the center to a point on the circle, that's the radius length. So, if we find the distance between those two points, we have then found the radius. Now, this one's very simple because they're on the same Y, so we can look at that and say, well, the distance between 13, 12, and 7, 12 is just six. So let's go ahead and plug it into the distance formula <clears throat> because that's probably what you're going to have to do in other scenarios like that. So let's go ahead and do the distance formula with these two points. So x minus x squared plus y minus y squared. So that's equal to the square root of 
36, because 12 minus 12 is 0. 13 minus 7 is 6, 6 squared is 36. And the square root of 36 is 6. So that is our radius. Because it is the distance between the center and a point on the circle. So now we can write our equation. X minus 13 squared plus Y minus 12 squared is equal to the radius squared. So it's equal to 36. Make sure you square that radius when you're writing the equation. Okay. Well, what if we're given a little bit different information? Look at number 21. 21, they tell us, well, here's your center. Okay, so that's good. We don't have to figure out where the center is. They tell us that. So we know H and K, but we need the radius. They gave us the circumference. Well, can't we figure out the circumference or the radius from the circumference? Circumference is equal to what? Y'all should be able to tell me by now. Circumference is equal to pi times the diameter or what if we want to use the radius? 2 pi r, right? Circumference is 2 pi r. So if the circumference is 4 pi and we're solving for the radius, we divide both sides by 2 pi, that's 4 divided by 2, our radius is 2. Now, I have examples on there using area. I'm not going to do one, but it's just like circumference. Okay, it's just like the circumference. You use the area to find the radius, and then, of course, turn around and square it when you plug it into the equation. So the equation of this circle is x minus 13 squared plus y plus 1 squared is equal to 4. That circle has a center at 13, negative 1, and it has a circumference of 4. Okay, so we can be told various pieces of information, but what it boils down to is to write the equation of the circle, you have to have the center, you have to have the radius. So whatever information they give you, that is the, enough information to figure out what the radius is if they don't just come out and give you the radius. Okay, so use that information to find the radius, whether it be distance formula or whether it be circumference or area formula, you can find the radius.